So uh, tell me about Dolly, and you designed a helmet for her, but there was a yes. design problem with her act. Well, she found it impossible to do her uh, to do her complete number with the helmet on, and so uh, we tried to analyze the problem and help her out because you can't mess with people who are you know she's thirty feet in the air and she, she's trying to do this thing that she's been doing forever, and the, the helmet prevents her from doing it. Does she do it with a net? No. Does she do it with any safety lines? No, she didn't have a line, but there was a half net for that last part of the number. Right. right. But anyway, um, I discovered that uh, the the weight of her ponytail was part of her timing. She wasn't even aware of it, but she just said, can't, "The helmet's killing. I can't do it with the helmet." And I said, well, what if we cut a hole in the helmet, you know, and it'll, it'll put your ponytail out through the helmet. As soon as we did that, she was fine with the helmet. And she, she tried it, and she got up in the rig, and she did it with the helmet, and it worked perfectly. And so she was in on the helmet from the rest of the, the, rest of the costume and everything. She was fine with it. But it took a while to, uh, to, to get to that, you know, because... That artist wasn't, she wasn't used to articulating what right. she needed in her number. She just knew instinctively that she couldn't do it with that on her head. Do you know what I'm saying? So is this the same with dancers? If you design for a ballet the, or, or, or for a dance company, that again, the dancer has to have a, a sense of their body, which if you put a certain costume on, they can't? Yeah, sometimes you get that, uh, you know... It's, it's not you know as crucial as it is with someone who's performing something very risky like that. You could break your neck, but uh, dancers do have very specific requirements sometimes. I mean, just weird things like I remember it, this one thing I did once. The the girl had a, a locket, you know, she wore, you know, just her hair up, and it was very simple. She had this locket, you know, and she said can't do the locket. I'm going like, why? And she says, well, because when, when I'm in my arabesque, the locket comes right down and hits me on my nose. You know what I mean? It makes total sense. So she says, don't worry, though. She says, we, I'm used to dealing with that. So she showed me this trick. They, she did a, a little loop of double-sided adhesive tape that she'd put right there, and then she put the locket on it, press it into it, and then she could do her arabesque all she wanted to, you know what I mean? It stayed put. But it just that's a tiny detail, but uh, they do have quite specific requirements sometimes. And, but I love that Dolly. I mean, Dolly was a girl, too, a woman, who said, you know, we were, we talked quite a bit and talked about Florida. She was a great homebody. Loved to cook and to, did you know all this stuff. And but if her father was Lou, right, the famous yes, clown, then yeah. she grew up in a circus world. She grew up in Sarasota, Florida, which is the winter home of the Ringling, right. Ringling Brothers, Barnum and Bailey Circus, that her dad worked for right. with for years, and that's their home. I mean, Sarasota, that's like where she was from. So, I learned a lot from her in that way. She, you know, she's very simple though, and she said, you know. All I am in my act, she said, I'm just a girl on a swing. That's how she, she reduced it to that. Right. And I said, you mean like that, like that Fragonard picture? Right. You know, the French painter, 18th century picture, the girl who's kicking her shoe off. She said, that's it, exactly, that's a picture. So I didn't know what it was, but she said, that's me. And so she had an idea of herself as a girl on a swing. You know what I mean? That's what she was. I just found that charming to, to come from her, you know? It's...